But let's do a graph in 3D by hand of a curve in space. Ugh, sounds challenging, huh? Um, it can be, but we won't do anything real complicated here. So I'm going to draw my x, y, and z axes. So I'm going to call this axis, you have to imagine it coming out of the screen at you. Ah, it's coming right at me. Um, I'm going to call the positive axis x. Uh, excuse me, the axis coming out of the screen at you uh, will be positive x. Positive y going to the right, and positive z going up. So the directions are to graph the curve, right? Sketch the graph given by dot, dot, dot. R of t equals the vector valued function 3 cosine t, comma, 4 sine t, comma, t over 2. Oftentimes, instead of using f and t and, and g of t in space, oftentimes we, fall the, we call the first component x of t, the second component y of t, and the third component z of t. And if you, if you wanted to, you could write down three parametric equations. x of t equals 3 cosine t, y of t equals 4 sine t, and z of t equals two, uh, t over 2. Um, but there's no reason to. We'll leave it in vector-valued function form. So uh, we need to graph the, the set of points represented by that vector-valued function. Again, we're just graphing the tips of the arrows here. So let's make a table. So the table is going to include one column for t values that you plug in, one column for x of t values, right, or just x values, if you want to leave off the function notation, and one value for y of t values, or just y values. And let's see, I want to, I want to plot some values that, that are easy to work with when you take the, the trig functions cosine and sine. So I'm thinking 0. For t, plugging in 0 for t would be pretty easy. And then how about uh, pi halves? Pretty easy to take the sine and cosine of pi halves. And then pi, so I guess I'm going by pi halves. The next one would maybe be 3 pi over 2. And then the next one, um, maybe all the way around to 2 pi. Yeah. And then we'll see what we get, what it looks like after we plug in those points. OK, so we're plugging in. Those are our inputs, right? Those are our inputs. Our output um, will be x, y, oh, and what did I forget here? How about a column for z of t? Yeah. <coughs> or just z. So the input is t. The output, you could actually think of just one output, x, y, z, right, if you want to. Um, OK, so let's see what they are. So if we plug in 0 for t, what do we get for, uh, for the first component, x of t? Yeah, th uh, cosine of 0 is 1 times 3 is 3. Let, you know what? Let's do all x's first. It'll be easier just to go down. So 3. And then if we plug in uh, pi over 2, what, what's 3 cosine pi over 2? Just 3 times 0 or 0. If we plug in pi, what's the cosine of m mm, pi? Mm, pi. Negative one, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, right? And then cosine of 3 pi over 2 times 3 is still 0. Cosine of 2 pi, we're back to 3. So let's do our second components now that pop out. Y of t, what happens if we plug in 0 in, uh, for t for 4 sine of t? What do we get? 4 sine of 0 is 0. Sine of pi halves is 1 times 4 is 4. What do we get for y of t if we plug in pi? 0. What about 3 pi over 2? Yeah, neg the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. What about 2 pi? Back to 0. And what about z? z says just half. You're just going to take half of the input, right? Half of the t. So just z oh, 0 over 2 is still 0. Then what's pi halves over 2? Pi fourths. Multiply, you can think of it as multiplying by, whoops, multiplying by 1 half, if you like, instead of dividing by 2. Get pi fourths, and then plug in pi, you'll get pi halves. 3 pi over, four, three pi over 2, you plug in, you get 3 pi over 4. 2 pi, you plug in 2 pi, you get mm pi again. OK, so now you're, you're 
you know, unless you decide to plug in more t values, you're done with t, and you're essentially going to plot these points and connect the dots in a nice, smooth way, nice, smooth curve. So, OK, 3, 0, 0. Let me go out a distance of 3 on the x-axis, something like that. And uh, I'll do it in red, so there it is. 3, 0, 0. <laughs> 0, 4, pi over 4. Oh, that brings up a question. What should I go by on the z-axis? Pi over 4, how about? So, because then the first one will be pi fours, and then we'll have pi halves after that, right? And then 3 pi over 4, and then the last one will be pi. And if you wanted to, you could just label pi and not label the rest of them, and you could figure out what the scaling is from that. OK, so that means uh, for my second point, I go 0, 4, up, pi, 4. So I have to go out 4 on the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have to go 0, I have to go uh, 0, 4. That puts me over here, and then up, pi, 4, so kind of you know what I'll do? I'll draw in kind of a, an edge of a box, like so. And then that points at the edge of the meeting of these two edges of a box. OK? Not perfect. It looks like I leaned downward a little bit. But make the point big enough, and you'll hit where you meant to. Um, and then uh, negative 3, 0, pi halves is the next value we want to plot. So we've got to go back 3 into the screen, into the wall. We're going back into the wall, somewhere back there. And then uh, negative 3, 0 on the y, pi halves on the z. So OK, so I should draw kind of an edge that's parallel to the x-axis. I'm just eyeballing it. It's not going to be perfect. And then draw an edge that's parallel to the z-axis. And the point that we want should meet at that corner. OK. And then the next point, what's the next point? 0, negative 4, 3 pi over 4. So negative 4 on the y-axis would be over here somewhere. Yeah. And then, um, so I'm going to draw an edge of the box straight up parallel with the z-axis up to a height of what? 3 pi over 4, we said? So draw out an edge parallel to the y-axis. And where those edges meet is your point. And then finally, 3, 0, pi. So 3, 0, okay, so you go out 3, 0 again, but then you have to go up a distance of pi. So let's see, maybe I'll draw a line parallel with the x-axis, draw that out, and then a line parallel with the z-axis. Kind of like a spiral staircase, you could imagine. And then where these two edges meet would be the last point that I'm plotting. Obviously, there's a lot more points. So when I draw, it looks like it should spiral upward. And again, the spiral staircase should be in your mind. So let me attempt to draw this freehand. It's not so easy on this thing. It's easier with pencil and paper, actually. Pencil has a little more grip on the paper. So it's spiraling. Now, by the way, as t increases, it's nice to put the orientation of the curve using a little arrow, right? As t increases, the curve is being traced out as indicated by the arrow. If you look at it from above, I suppose it's a counterclockwise curve as, as it, or it's being traced out counterclockwise, I should say. And still going around like that. There you go. Not too bad. OK. So any questions on that procedure? You're not going to have to graph too many things in space, too many curves in space, maybe a line in space, right? Connect two, plot two points, connect the dots, that sort of thing. And then a, a, you know, a relatively simple curve like this. Any, any questions on that? It's actually called a helix. It's an elliptical helix. 
So what would the domain of this function be? What are you allowed to input? All real numbers. You, now, you have to look at each coordinate, right? If there's any restriction on any, well, I should call them components, I suppose, since it's a vector-valued function. Look at each component. If there's any restriction on any of the components, then you're not going to be able to plug in all real numbers. Like if you had the, like the square root of t as one of your components, then you'd have to have t values greater than or equal to 0 for your inputs, right? Not the case here. So we could say that the domain of this vector-valued function, if you think of uh, interval notation, you could say um, negative infinity to infinity. And so these are t values, right? It's very important you realize the inputs are represented by the parameter t. Remember, t is called the parameter. So um, t values. And just since I haven't mentioned it yet, t is called the parameter. We think of that input variable as the parameter. It's not always called t. It could be called something else. Oftentimes, we think of t as representing time, although we don't have to. OK? So there you go. There's your first curve in space.